Hey, what up, guys? Coming to you this morning with another year-end top 10. We're continuing the series. These next set of videos are going to feature the 140-pound junior welterweight division or super lightweight division. They call it a combination of both. You can call it either one. I like to refer to it as the, refer to it as the junior welterweight division. I think I like that better because welterweight is the the premier division in boxing right now, and um, you know it's the division right under that. So um, I think that's why I call it that. But that being said, this video is going to feature the uh, dropouts from last year's top ten, the guys that dropped out of the top ten, and then we're going to get into the fighters uh, between 8, 9, and the two guys that are tied for 10th in this video. So let's kick it off. We start with the uh, the first guy to drop out of the top 10 is 34-year-old former three-division world champion Jorge Linares of Venezuela. Um, Linares entered the year actually ranked number one in this division, and he was coming, and he, 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 yeah, he was ranked number one in this division. Um, he went one and one overall. He, he drops out of the top 10 due to uh, getting knocked out at 140, which we'll get into uh, later, but um, yeah, he got knocked out and then just decided to move back down to lightweight that 140 was too big for him. So um, I'll get into his full year in detail when I discuss the lightweights because he did crack the lightweight top 10 at 135. So that um, that's what's going on with him. He's uh, currently not ranked in at 140 anymore, so uh, that's, that's Jorge Linares. The next fighter to drop out of the top 10 is 33-year-old former two-division world champion Rancis Bartholemy, who um, also, he drops out. He only fought one time. It was a draw in 2019, and that was at lightweight. He decided to move back down to lightweight for that fight. Um, again, he did crack my top 10 for lightweight, so, um, so I will talk about him in his year when we discuss the lightweight division. He's still currently ranked uh, in at 140 though at number five so there is a chance he could get back into the 140 pound division um this year so we'll see what happens but again we'll discuss him more in detail when i discuss when i talk about the lightweights uh 135 the next fighter to drop out of the top 10 is 29 year old former 130 pound champion javier fortuna uh fortuna previously was was tied for ninth coming into the year he dropped out uh, he drops out of my top 10. He fought a couple times. He was undefeated in 2019, but he drops out because both of his fights took place at lightweight. He has fully moved back down to the lightweight division. It was just a one-off him moving up to 140 um, when he uh, fought Adrian Granados last year. So uh, yeah, well, again, he made my top 10 at lightweight, so I will discuss his full year in detail when we talk about the lightweight division. And the fourth and final fighter to drop out of the top 10 is former world title challenger Antonio Orozco. He entered uh, tied for ninth. He entered this year tied for ninth. He, Orozco was coming off of 2018 where he had finally made a name for himself. He, he had a lot of weight issues which really affected him being in the ring. He was very inactive due to a lot of his weight issues. So uh, in 2018, he finally got his weight under control for 140, and he he stepped in to challenge Jose Ramirez for the WBC title and Ramirez's first title defense. So you know a lot of people going in were were overlooking him, but um, man, he gave Ramirez a good fight. He he got knocked down a, uh, about two or three times in that fight, but he kept getting up, and it ended up being a a really good back and forth battle, and it was a you know fight of the year candidate. So. He really gave a good version of himself. Nothing to hang his head about. He went the full 12 against Ramirez, which actually this year looks a lot better for him. But um, that changed. Uh, he, he His first fight back, he took on some nobody and got a 10 round decision. No shame in that. But then in August, he moved up to full weight of 147 to take on undefeated rising prospect Virgil Ortiz Jr. And he got destroyed in that fight. Virgil Ortiz just walked right through him. Um, dominated him, sixth round knockout win. Um, not sure what that's going to do for Orozco coming in to 2000 and um, you know 2020 now. Um, I really think he's better suited for his size and his height. He's better suited for 140, but for some reason he has weight issues. So he's floated with moving up to 147, but he's too small for 147. So I think he's better off fighting at 140, but he's got to get that weight under control. So. 
2020 needs to be a bounce back year. He could definitely get back into it, um, you know, into the top 10 for sure. But he's got to get in there with somebody credible. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys, now we're going to bust out and get into the top 10 junior welterweights finishing the year and see who made the top 10 now. We start with, we have a two-way tie for 10th, and the first up is contender Adrian Granados. This guy was coming off of 2018 where he wasn't ranked last year at, uh, at 147. I mean, at 140, I believe he was in my, he was right around the, the tail end of my top 10 at, um, at one at welterweight. So 140, he wasn't ranked here anymore as he had moved up to welterweight pretty much. But um, he actually had come back and fought Javier Fortuna at a catchweight at 140. But I really wasn't sure what he was gonna do. So he didn't make the rankings coming into the year. But he came into 2019 still considered to be a tough out for anybody. So in April, he got a big fight with Danny Garcia. And man, I was surprised at this one. Danny just totally dominated Adrian Granados who had never been knocked out. He knocked him down three times, seventh round knockout win, just totally dominated him. That was a tough loss for him at 147. Then he returned those six months later in October and moved back down to 140 to take on former lightweight champion Robert Easter Jr. who was debuting at 135. And he gave a great fight in that one. It was a back and forth battle between the two. Um, from what I read, because I didn't see the whole fight, was that he landed more punches but Robert Easter landed the better punches. So those fights are always tough to score, but, but they came back with a one-sided decision win for Robert Easter. And um, you know, a lot of people said that fight was a lot closer. So because of that, because the guy has put up good fights in the last two to three years, um, he makes the top 10 right here. Entering 2020 though, he's 30 years old, so he's kind of in the prime of his career in terms of his, his age, but He's kind of on the downside because he's a veteran. He's been around for a while. And, um, you know, he still has yet to get a world title shot. I think Granados needs to throw Kajin to the wind. Hopefully the crossing the street stuff works. And he needs to get in there and try to get a title shot. He, he likely now is going to be looked at as a stepping stone guy. So why not try to get in line for some of these champions and get a shot? But we got to see what happens. I do like Granados. He's an all-action guy, a fun guy to watch. But we got to see if he's going to get an opportunity or not in 2020. But I hope he does at least get him into some kind of an eliminator, I think would be good for him. But we got to wait and see what happens. Coming off of back-to-back -back losses, it's tough to say what a guy does. He doesn't really have a lot of pull. It's not really up to him. So we'll see. Okay, now next, finishing tied for 10th with him is former IBF champion Ivan Baryanchik. Um, Baryanchik was coming off, entered the year uh, tied for 9th. He was, uh, the, he was the undefeated IBF champion coming into the year. Uh, he, he had captured a title in 2018 when he entered the World Boxing Super Series. Mikey Garcia passed on fighting him, and so um, the title went vacant, and he was the number one contender, and he took on Anthony Yidget in the quarterfinals of the World Boxing Super Series, and um, he walked right through Anthony Yidget with ease, dominated him, sixth-round TKO, so coming into the year, Yidget wasn't a you know a really big name though, and nobody really knew him. He hadn't done nothing either. So I think the jury was out about Baryanchik and how good he was. Well, in May he was going to get tested for sure as he went over to um, the United Kingdom to take on undefeated Josh Taylor in his own country. And um, you know he fought his ass off. He fought hard. He came at Taylor, but he took a knockdown. And he just got outboxed and he lost his world title. But um, he came back five months later in October, took on some uh, veteran, Gabriel Bracero. I don't think Bracero had ever been stopped, and he dominated Bracero and stopped him in four rounds impressively. And, um, you know, he's still on everybody's radar. You know, he's still there. He's a tough guy. He's going to be a tough out for anybody, in my opinion. He's, um, he's only 26 years old, so he's young, very aggressive, very tough. And um, he's ranked still number four by the IBF, so... I think it's possible he can get back into title contention for sure this year. He's not a big name, though. He's going to be looked at as a high-risk, low-reward guy. So he needs to try to get himself into some kind of a mandatory fight or a final eliminator to boost his, himself up. Because not, I don't think a lot of guys are willingly going to fight him, especially since his loss to Taylor. And Taylor's a unified champ now. And there's only one other unified champ. He's really going to have to work hard to get himself 
to become a number one contender by the end of the year. I don't I don't think he's going to get a title shot this year. I think he's going to have to work himself into, a, like I said, a final eliminator or a fight like that to get himself uh, to become a mandatory heading into 2021. Next up and finishing 2019 in ninth place is former world title challenger Pablo Cesar Cano. Cano came out of nowhere. He wasn't even close to being ranked heading into 2019. Um, he his 2018. He had uh, he only fought once. He got a technical decision victory over some nobody, and that was after a 2017 where he lost back to back fights. And if you combine that with his 2016, the guy lost three out of four fights. So definitely was a journeyman, but he got a golden opportunity to challenge um, to take on. Jorge Linares, who was fighting for his second time at 140. And everybody said, because Cano's a guy who's fought all the way up at 147, um, a lot of people said that, you know, Cano was a lot bigger than Linares, who had been upset in previous years against um, unknown guys or very little known guys. And so a lot of people were uh, were on the, the boat that, you know, Cano could surprise Linares and surprise him, he did. Yeah, he knocked him down three times in the first round and knocked him out in that first round. Impressive ass win for Pablo Cesar Cano. Uh, it was a big upset, but given the size, I don't think a lot of people were surprised, but it was a very good win. He um, tried to get back in action quick, but I think he suffered, suffered a couple minor injuries that kept him out of the ring. And then in November, I believe, he returned on a Facebook card, destroyed some little known guy named Roberto Ortiz in two rounds. and. You know, Cano entering this year, again, he's a veteran. He's uh, 30 years old. He um, He's ranked fifth by the WBC right now. He went 2-0. and His record overall is 33-7 uh, is, uh, and seven with 23 knockouts. So, you know, again, he's a veteran. He's one of those journeyman guys. But he's one of those guys that is right now, he needs to try to get a title shot this year and or put himself in position for a title shot to get one last one because – Cano really came out of nowhere not expecting anything and he got something big and now that he got something big he really needs to try to jump on that and stay um stay busy and keep himself relevant and um I think he's open for guys like Kiro Relic I mean well yeah Kiro Relic too but more guys on the lines of like Regis Progray and Progray's first fight back and guys like that and if he gets opportunities against them with his power you never know he could surprise somebody again so that's, that's what he needs to do. He needs to use that victory over Linares as a ticket to get in line for somebody else. And I think um, uh, I think he's going to get an opportunity this year against somebody. It may not be for a title, but I do believe he'll get some kind of opportunity. So we'll see what happens. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to wrap up this video stopping right there at number nine. All right, number, yeah, number nine. We'll get into number eight on the next video. But I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Keep staying tuned. True Boxing has a year-end top 10s for the 140-pound division. True Boxing, you've been here with the truth.